Hey everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog.com. Last year I looked at the iPod Touch 6th generation and deemed it to be a decent secondary device option or device for someone who wanted iMessage and FaceTime without investing thousands into an iPhone and data plan or even hundreds into an iPhone without a data plan. But for the same price as that device last year, starting at $199, which I could get it used for that price last year, you can now get a modern offering, at least according to Apple. Let's unbox and compare the Product Red iPod Touch 7th generation and compare it to the 6th generation iPod Touch. So it comes in the same packaging that iPods have been coming in for years now, and it's definitely the cheapest and least exciting box you can get a device in, especially from Apple. I mean, even the AirPods have better packaging than this. But it comes with the product red card for this model, and then the quick start guide, and then warranty information and two Apple stickers. Underneath is a lightning cable and ear pods without a microphone nor control buttons. There's no charging cube nor loop in the box. I guess no one really used the loop anyway. And dimensionally, this is absolutely identical to the iPod Touch 6th generation, which is to say very thin, very light, and just tiny, like you fit it anywhere. It has the same aluminum build, which is actually really nice, the same bright colors, the same headphone jack, the same lightning port for charging on the bottom, the same unimpressive speakers, home button up front, and the same mediocre cameras. Here are some shots from both phones. Basically, it's great if you have no other camera around you and you need to capture something like a giant spider in the room, but it's so far from replacing a modern smartphone or a dedicated camera. The new iPod Touch does support group FaceTime, which is great, but I don't think that means you'll be looking great, at least resolution, I'm sure you'll be looking fine otherwise. But speed is the big difference here. With iOS 13 being announced very, very soon and being released later in the year, Apple's almost certainly going to drop support for the iPod 6 and add support for the iPod 7, and it will likely also get iOS 14 next year and maybe even iOS 15 in the following. Powering up and opening all the apps from a fresh reboot and fresh install of the OS on both of these, you can see that starting from the boot up and opening up every app is quicker on the iPod 7, and that's not going to be an anomaly. The iPod 7 will be snappier in virtually every single task. It has 2016's A10 Fusion processor, which first appeared in the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. I mean, those aren't that old. So this should be faster than the iPhone SE, which would be a popular alternative to this iPod when bought used. The iPod also has 2GB of RAM, double the iPod Touch 6th generation, which means yes, Fortnite is indeed available on this iPod. And speaking of Fortnite, gamers are undoubtedly one of the reasons Apple upgraded this, likely costing very, very little for Apple to put in this 3-year-old processor. They are now offering a device that will support the upcoming Apple Arcade gaming subscription, which they hope kids and families will buy. It's a smart move. Imagine you're 10 years old and Apple's offering this new subscription service to play any game you want. As a parent, get them a $200 device and a subscription to this gaming service, and they're content. And that's not too much money. It's cheaper than a console, um, and it'll keep them out of trouble, hopefully. I definitely think that's one angle Apple is taking with this. Additionally, the device starts at double the 6th generation storage at 32GB versus 16GB and goes up to twice as well at 256GB. For a dedicated music device in the car or around the home for airplay, this makes sense. Size doesn't matter in the situations, in fact the smaller the better so it doesn't take up extra space, and the storage capacity will be more than enough for libraries of tens of thousands of songs plus apps and movies. Now the 4 inch screen is absolutely tiny, smaller than the smallest of modern iPhones, which basically is 4.7 inches at minimum. So for most people, this will be so far from ideal for a content machine. So reading or watching content or scrolling through social media. I think for most people, this is going to be so small when we're used to iPhones that are 4.7, 5.5, up 6.5, you know, a lot bigger but throw it in front of a kid who doesn't know better or give it a music or podcast purpose, 
and the size doesn't really matter anymore, and 4 inches will be fine for those purposes. And of course, if what you're really interested in is iOS for enterprise purposes or for a business, this has iOS, and that is going to be much better with an A10 Fusion processor. So basically the only difference is that this is now faster and comes in more storage options, but with a faster processor, it opens the doors for better software. But the most important thing is that is iOS in general, and that's what you're going to be getting this for. So this is a nice little device. I won't be using this myself. I don't really have a purpose for it, but I can see other people with a need, and this is certainly a good upgrade over the iPod 6 that is slowing down um, and only has one gigabyte of RAM. Let me know what you think of this device in a comment down below. I'll leave links to this iPod if you want to pick one up for yourself, but thanks so much for watching.